Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the Tascam DP24 Digital Porter Studio and its first generation unit, MIDI implementation. In January of 2012, Tascam released the DP24 Digital Porter Studio. Now, this is what I refer to as the first generation or version one of that unit. Then in April, of 2015, Tascam released the DP24 SD Digital Porta Studio. This is what I refer to as the second generation or version 2 release of that unit. The DP24 SD is of course newer, but it's a scaled down version of its predecessor, lacking any MIDI implementation at all and no built in CDRW drive. At a high level, the Tascam DP24 first generation's features and the Tascam DP24 SD's second generation features are very similar with the exception of a couple of very important differences. So let's take a look at the Tascam DP24 first gen's features. This unit had up to eight tracks of simultaneous recording and simultaneous 24 track playback. It also has an LCD color display and eight microphone inputs. The unit has solid state recording to SD card media and instrument level input for direct recording of guitar or bass. It has dedicated controls for EQ pan and effects sends and multiple effects processors are included on the unit. It also has virtual tracks for alternate takes and undo. Now here's one of the big differences between the first gen and second gen units. The first gen unit has a CDRW drive for mix down and backup. Second gen unit does not have this. You have to plug it into a PC via USB in order to uh, copy over your files to burn to a CDRW drive. The first gen device has built in chromatic tuner and metronome. And here is another big difference between the first gen and second gen units. The first gen unit has a five pin DIN uh, MIDI import, uh, MIDI ports for import and output and also advanced MIDI uh, functionality. The second gen uh, SD units do not have this functionality. Last but not least is the quarter inch monitor outputs, effects send outs, and a headphone output. When released, the first generation Tascam DP24 unit was a breakthrough for the company and in many ways continues to be for folks who have home studios like myself. So you might ask what makes the first generation Tascam DP24 SD so special? Well actually it's simple. The first generation units were the first economic 24 track external hardware multi-track units released with the features previously described that had advanced MIDI implementation that did not require a PC. Now many first gen DP owners like myself understand that fact and will not part with their units because of it. For instance, I own two DP24 first gen units and I sync them together via MIDI to create one 48 channel multi-track recording center. My units work together simply, flawlessly, and support my workflow. Now, since the DP24 is a digital mixer with an additional hardware or software sequencer, via MIDI, users can create automated mixes and program changes that rival the functionality of much more expensive digital mixers. Now, here's a point of note. I once talked with a first gen DP24 owner who had a technical issue with their unit and they sent it back to Tascam for repair because it was under warranty. Now, instead of Tascam returning his original first gen unit to him, Tascam sent him a second generation SD unit instead. Since this was clearly a downgrade, the owner was understandably upset. So you may want to keep this in mind if your first gen unit requires repair. Well, if it does at some point, my strong suggestion would be to take it to a local repair shop first, insist that they fix it, 
and not let them send it back to Tascam if at all possible. Now let's go over the details of the Tascam DP24 first generations MIDI implementation. When the unit receives MIDI control change messages from an external device such as a keyboard or a sequencer, it can control the mixer parameters and the effects parameters, which is very cool. Now let's take a look at the mixer control change parameters. Now what you would do is you would select a group of eight track input channels beforehand. That is, you would set, that's how you would set it up. The bank select message is then used with the MIDI channel, which is channel 14, to select the channel group. Like to give you an example of how this is set up, bank zero um, controls uh, track channels one through eight, bank one controls track channels nine through 16, Bank 2 controls track channels 17 through 24. And Bank 3 controls inputs A through H on the unit. Now the following table on your screen now shows the variable range of mixer parameter and the mapping to the MIDI control change. So on your chart here you have your MIDI channel on the left with your control numbers first and then a column for your parameters. And then after that, you have the track input channels, which is one through eight through that column, and then the stereo master, which is uh, 16. Moving on, we take a look at our MIDI program change messages. Now, when the unit receives MIDI program change messages, it can call settings from the effect libraries. This is how you can control your effects and other items of that nature. The bank select message of the MIDI control change is used to select presets and users of the effect libraries. So different MIDI channels are applied for each item. For instance, in at the top left uh, corner of your screen in the first um, chart here, you have your MIDI channel, your parameter functions, um, and the value for what you're going to call um, in the uh, MIDI program change message, your bank. So under that, you have your dynamic effects. You have your program change. You have what type of effect it is. And then, the, I mean, you have the display, I'm sorry, of the effect. And then you have the uh, type of effect it is. Next, you have um, your... Uh, preset libraries of send effects. Again, you have your program change numbers. You have your display of what effect it is, hall, room, live, studio, plate, etc. And then you have the effect type. And on your far right, you then have the preset libraries of guitar effects. And you have your program changes for those. Uh, the display that you're going to see to represent that particular effect. And then you have what type of effect that is. So you don't, you know, that's kind of the translation. So you don't have to guess or worry about uh, making sure that your parameters are correct. Moving on, we now have what you've all been waiting for. The uh, first generation DP24 MIDI implementation chart. Now on the right, in the top of your screen, you will see all of the different mode settings, mode one through four. And the key here, uh, for instance, uh, your zero means yes, that it can do it. And of course, X means no, that the unit will not be able to implement this particular MIDI functionality. So let's start. We have uh, four columns on the chart. We have function, transmitted, recognized, and remarks. So let's go down the function column row by row and take a look at what the unit can and can't do. So um, on basic channel, we have um, it can transmit and receive on all MIDI channels, one through 16. Moving down to mode, um, the default mode is mode three. And for the note number, it has true voice. It can send and receive on all, uh, from zero to 127 note range on all of the note numbers. Next um, is velocity. The, the unit is not velocity sensitive and it does not have pitch bend um, recognition or transmission. Under that, we have control change, and we see this is where the unit shines. It 
has, well, we just talked about it. It has a lot of uh, control over effects and mixer settings and so forth. Next, we have program change. And yes, we just talked about that again. The unit can do it on, uh, it can uh, recognize notes zero through uh, 127. What follows is system exclusive. This is where the unit shines. It can send and receive uh, system exclusive messages. That means that you can take a snapshot of your mix configuration and save it to disk and then recall it later when you need it. Uh, what follows is system common, quarter frame, song position. Uh, it can uh, transmit quarter frame, song position. It can um, transmit it, says it can't receive it. Um, and song select and such in tune, it uh, does not transmit or receive those. System real time commands, clock is transmitted. And for others uh, under that particular functionality, uh, it can't send or transmit any of those. Now the notes are important because what the notes do is they tell you how the system works under each individual mode. So that's important to check out to get a better understanding of how the device functions in the different modes. Let's move on. Next, we have our bitmap array of MMC commands. You might say, what in the world is this? So if you are programming MIDI software for the DP24, this is the information that you're going to need to use to be able to set up your uh, software or program your software to be able to manipulate uh, the mixer and program change uh, commands on the DP24. Well, let's say more importantly, things like uh, rewind, fast forward, play, stop, things of that nature. In summary, as we've seen, the first generation Tascam DP24 units, MIDI implementation is very rich. The same MIDI implementation is also available on the first generation Tascam DP32 units. Other external hardware multi-track units under the $600 price point at the time of this presentation either don't have MIDI or their current firmware MIDI implementations are very limited and or they require a PC DAW connection. Competing brands may add more built-in MIDI functionality to their unit's firmware in the future if users or potential buyers demand it, but that remains to be seen. So why did Tascam remove the MIDI functionality from the second generation DP24 and DP32 SD units? Well, I can only speculate uh, that this made the SD units cheaper and easier to support from Tascam's perspective. Also, from a pure marketing standpoint, it forces prospective buyers to check out the more expensive Tascam Model 12 which is still a very good machine. Could Tascam add USB MIDI to the SD units in the future? This may be possible, but the real question is, why would they? You see, with the popular and more expensive model series multi-track units selling well, the MIDI-less SD units are the current mainstay from Tascam at the $600 price point and below. Well, that is a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every seven to 14 days, and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this presentation and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Also, while you're here, check out some of the music and the other videos and especially the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.